Ethers are generally non-reactive molecules. There's not a lot of stuff that you can do with an ether. One reaction that they will do is called the acidic cleavage reaction. And in this reaction, we take an ether, we react it with a strong acid in the presence of heat, and the strong acid serves to break the ether molecule apart into alkyl halides. So we're gonna get a couple of alkyl halides from this reaction, and then also we get a water molecule that's being produced from the ether's oxygen and the hydrogens from the acid. There are some restrictions on what can be used to do this particular reaction. HX only works, uh, the reaction only works if HX is HBr or HI. Now, if we do this reaction with an ether that has a benzene ring attached directly to the oxygen, one of the products of that reaction is going to be phenol. You are not going to be able to put a halogen directly on that benzene ring. We're going to take a look at the mechanism of this reaction to explain why this product is formed and also to give you an idea about how the reaction works overall. So let's start with just a standard diethyl ether reacting with HBr, of course, in the presence of heat. The first step in this reaction is protonation of the ether's oxygen molecule. And once that oxygen molecule is protonated, the halogen, bromide in this case, or iodide if you're using HI, it will attack either one of the carbon atoms that are bonded directly to the ether's oxygen. So we could have it attacking from either position. It's going to eventually attack both of them, so it really doesn't matter which one you choose to start with. This is an SN2 reaction, so we are breaking that carbon-oxygen bond. And in this first step, we have produced an alcohol and we have produced one of the halogenated products, one of the halogenated alkanes of the reaction. So there's product number one right there. There is still a lot of acid present, so we're going to get HBr molecule number two. It is going to also protonate the oxygen. This time it's protonating the alcohol's oxygen, but it's protonating the same oxygen molecule giving us another positively charged oxygen. We're also getting you know, the bromine coming off as a bromide ion, and that bromide ion now is going to attack the other carbon of the molecule. There's only one left. This is another SN2 reaction. This gives us our second alkyl halide and also the water molecule, which has come off as a good leaving group. So there are the products of this reaction. There's our alkyl halide, there's our water molecule, and then there's our other alkyl halide as well. For this reaction, when it's done with a, a ether that has a benzene ring attached directly to the oxygen, the reaction starts the same way. So we start by protonating that oxygen with the strong acid and we get I'm going to put my hydrogen up there. We get this molecule, the bromide ion, then does the SN2 reaction on the carbon, breaking the carbon-oxygen bond. Just like in the, the first reaction that we looked at, we're forming an alcohol originally and our alkyl halide. There's product number one. And as I had mentioned in the schematic up here, this is where the reaction stops. But let's, let's take a look at why it stops there. So let's kind of imagine that we were going to continue reacting just so that we can see what could possibly happen. So if we had, um, well, we do have lots of HBr, but if we bring in a second HBr molecule, that second HBr molecule is going to protonate the oxygen, and we will end up with, this molecule right here. But now what do we do? So we have this bromide ion and normally what we would expect to see, so for example in this process up here, the bromide ion attacking a carbon that's attached to the oxygen and breaking that bond. In order to do that on this particular intermediate, the bromide would have to attack this carbon right here, this carbon that's part of the ring. Remember that this is an SN2 reaction. In the SN2 reaction, our nucleophile is not attacking an sp2 hybrid carbon. Um, it is not attacking a carbon that is part of a double bond. It's not attacking carbons that look like this. It's attacking our normal sp3 tetrahedral type carbons. Um, so this step is an impossible step, and this step will not happen at all. So nothing is going to happen beyond the formation of this guy right here. 
Um, and that's not the molecule that we're trying to make. So what we're going to do is just kind of back this whole reaction up. This is, is the end of it. This is as far as it goes. Um, yes, I'm sure that you do get some protonated phenol. You'll, you will end up with some protonated, this guy right here. But that's very easy to resolve, just to remove, the, to remove the hydrogen from that oxygen. So these are the products of the acidic cleavage of an ether.